One. Hey everybody, welcome back to LDRS Creative. This is a Thursday night craft along, so hopefully, and I know I haven't said this in quite a while, but hopefully you guys have something to craft with. Uh, whether you're coloring or knitting or crocheting or painting or whatever it is, I would love for you guys to be doing something with me while I'm crafting or if you prefer, sit and watch and, uh, and chit chat with everybody because that's always fun too. So hello to everybody. Oh my goodness, we've got a lot of people coming in. I've saw, we've got Jen Ray and Dieta is here. Uh, Kathy Finnegan, I think you said you were from Ohio. I think I saw it in there. Beth Ballone is here and Sarah Fincham. Fincham, is that how you say it? Mary Sebastiano, I love that name. That's a cool name, Sebastiano. <laughs> uh, who else is here? Donna Jett and uh, Deb. Oh, I, last name went by too quickly. Um, lots of people, so uh, welcome everybody. Junie Hansen and Lynn Rourke. Oh, it's so great to see everybody, yay. <laughs> um we have got uh we've got we've got a lot to to actually go through today today i'm going to feature um i haven't done it in a little while but i'm going to feature the pirouettes again so for those of you that are new to pirouettes you're going to get uh you're going to get a little tutorial on um on these and uh, for those of you that have your pirouette templates already um, i'm going to also be working with the new pirouettes which would be the finest blooms along with the easter pirouette set um, so um, I'm actually not going to chit chat for too long because we do have a lot to cover. This time I am going to start, but you may have an itch that won't go away. <laughs> I keep trying to ignore it. It's driving me crazy. I probably have a hive or something. Anyway, sorry. Um, I'm uh, Normally when I do the pirouettes, I start with the pirouette circle template. And um, so this time I'm actually going to start with the background template, the background builder, because um, because I, I really, I just want to spend a little more time and focus on that. So I'm going to show you how, like the fast way to build a background. And we're going to talk about that template a little bit. And then I'm, I, I am going to work with the Pirouette um, Circles template as well. So uh, we're going to go ahead. Let's see, we've got more people coming in. Oh my goodness, everybody. Thank you so much. I see Cindy Patty has joined us and Terry Daniel. Who else? I'm looking for new names. Some names, they're going, going by pretty quickly, but very, very cool. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we're going to go ahead and switch the camera to camera two. So, Misto Hunt, mm -hmm. camera, let's go to camera three. All righty. <coughs> All right, so this is my pirouette template set. So, mine has ink on it. Mine doesn't look real pretty. Um, but it doesn't matter how pretty it is. Looks aren't everything. <laughs> and um, I'm going to pull this out. You're going to get in your pirouettes... You're going to get four templates. See, it says four templates. So you're going to get four templates, but notice it doesn't say four pieces. So this is where, you know, we get a lot of questions about this. People get their templates and they go, but I only got three. Well, no, you got three pieces, but you did get four templates. So you should have your pirouette circles stamp alignment template, which looks like the bullseye. You should have, this is an add-on template. Um, this is your pirouette spiral stamp alignment template. That is template number two. And then this one that you cannot see through has the Pirouette Master Template on the front. That's the main one. And then we have the background template on the back. So this one that you don't see through has two templates, okay? Um, you're also going to get a set of instructions that I don't have in here, but I'm going to be instructing you through this anyway, so I don't really have to have that, right? I'm going to show you how to make this. Isn't that pretty? Yay! Um, so true to form, I have done some of the work here already. Um, I've already started with a little bit of setup. And let me go back to camera, go to camera two. Let's see how this is. We might have to come back in, but we'll see. I've already, I've already selected my stamps. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, I want to show you which stamps I'm working with. That would be helpful too. So for those of you that have not seen the new collection yet, I'm going to show you the stamps that I'm going to be working with. So um, first off, I'm going to be working, this is all from our February collection. Uh, the newest addition to our pirouettes is the, these, these are my working sets, so that's why they look kind of messy. But the Finest Blooms Pirouette, this is a 6x8 stamp set. 43 stamps in total. You've got your two large wreaths, which we, we typically have in the larger sets. All kinds of sentiments in here, some little, little characters, little images, and then a whole bunch of leafy and flowery things in here. 
wonderful for spring and summer and just year after year all through the year actually i mean you could technically use a lot of this if, just in christmas colors if you wanted to do a christmas card as well it's really really versatile um, on the back we have the colored image and then we do have the dies sold separately so there's 20 dies and it's going to cut out those two large wreaths uh, some of the sentiments uh, characters and some of the flowers but not everything needs to be cut out so we don't have a die for everything that's how we help to kind of keep the cost down for you as well. Um, and on the back, we've mapped out which die goes with which stamp so that you never you never get lost. You got a map. <laughs> so that is the finest blooms. And then I really wanted to do something for Easter. Um, we don't do a whole lot, you know, a, a whole, I, I, I'm trying to think of, did we do? I think we did have uh, an Easter set last year, but we don't typically do a whole lot of it. Um, but I really wanted to have something Easter for the pirouettes. Um, so we came up with a mini, or technically, I guess you could call it an add-on. This is a four by six stamp set, 30 stamps in it. Um, you can use this on its own uh, to stamp. You can also use this just on its own. You don't have to use either of these with the pirouette, um, but they are designed for use with the pirouette. But you can use this one on its own if you don't have this one. You can, um, you can use this to create some really, really beautiful um, circular, like round leaf or wreath pirouettes as well as backgrounds and so on. Um, but if you wanted, the reason I call it an add-on is if you want to mix it with your finest blooms, it just really kind of magnifies what you can do for Easter. Um, and this stamp does have some solid stamping in it too. So we have some little Easter eggs. So you can do your Easter egg coloring, you know, in your, in your crafting. So when it's all lined up in your stamp set here or in, you know, on your, your little acetate sheets, where you have the solid stamp, the pattern stamp that's next to it is the one that goes with the solid stamp. So like we have the smaller ones right next to each other here and then down here there's two. And so basically the way the solid stamping works, if you're not, if you've never done it before, you would stamp your solid stamp first in a light, light color and then in a darker color, coordinating color, contrasting color, or just a darker version of the same color, however you want to decorate your eggs you would then stamp this, that, that one over where you just stamped this one and you would, you would get colored eggs. They would just be all patterned and look really pretty and so on. Um, we're not gonna do that today, but I, do, I just wanted to mention to you how that works. All right, so here's your colored image. And then um, of course you have your coordinating dies and we've mapped out on the back which stamp has a die and, um, and how that works. So these are the stamps that I'm gonna be using. And um, let's see, now, now we're going to get started. I've already grabbed my stamps out of here. So I don't know if you can see in here some of these, but you just see the image because I already, I already pulled the stamp out. And um, basically, because I had already done this once, um, I just went ahead and, oops, let me get this off of here. This is my little paper. I was all prepped and ready to go. I just went ahead and, um, and put the stamps in place. You'll see how they lay on the template. Um, just like so. So this is the template. Now, one of the things I will say in order to use this, this, these templates are designed for use with a stamping platform of some sort. Um, you just need to be able to, it needs to be large enough for you to fit the, the template in there. This is a six and a quarter square template. And, um, and so if I lay this down, you know, I'll explain this in a minute, but if, you, if I lay this down here, you can see how I have a stamp in each one of these little squares and rectangles. All right, see how they're all lined up in there? The instructions that you're going to get with your templates will explain how these quadrants work. You can work one quadrant at a time or you can work all of them at the same time like I am. So we have them color coordinated. If you just wanted to work one quadrant at a time, then you would, let's say you start up here in the, in the left, you would put your three stamps um, and you would try and keep them within the spaces here. Um, if you go out a little bit or if you put a tiny little stamp in, like this one, I have a tiny little stamp, you know, on that long rectangle. And let me come in a little bit. Let's, let, let's zoom in here. So I do have a teeny tiny little stamp. You don't have to fill up all of that space. This one too. You don't have to fill it up completely. And you can put your stamp anywhere in, the, in that space. If, it, if you do use a stamp that is larger than one of these spaces, you're going to end up with some overlap. You may end up with some overlap just by placing, you know, just by filling up the spaces. They might come really close. They might even touch a little bit. And that's fine. I don't want you to think you can't have overlap. 
Now I did place them on here um, carefully and I moved things around um, so that they would not overlap. But if they do overlap, I don't want you to think there's a problem with that. It's perfectly acceptable and absolutely beautiful. You know, when you look at pattern papers and you see how we kind of mix all of those, those shapes um, and little images together and we have some over the others and just kind of layer them in, that's, that's kind of the look you end up getting if you do have some layering over. So I don't want you to worry about that. But anyway, if you were working with one quadrant at a time, then you would fill up those that quadrant with your stamps, you would ink it, you would make your turns that you're gonna see me do, and then you would work in the next quadrant with a with another color, and then third third quadrant with another color as you put your stamps in and so on. The way I'm gonna do it, you layer up everything at one time, and now we only have to make four turns instead of one quadrant, four turns, next quadrant, four turns, and so on. So I've laid all these in here, and you can see I did position these. I just kind of moved them around and played with them um, so that they weren't going to touch and just kind of move them around. Um, and like I said, that's optional. If you want to do it, go for it. If you don't, it's not necessary. Um, so that's what this template is for. It's just for the placement of your stamps. Now, oh, I, I do want to mention too, um, Linnea is not, I don't think Linnea is here tonight. She's not here. So if you have questions, Alan should be watching. Are you watching questions? Okay, so if you have questions, Alan's going to try and pass those to me. I'm not able to really watch as I the questions as I do this, um, but we will do our best to get questions answered. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. I have now have my piece of cardstock, and I'm using this is Nina Classic Crest Solar White. You can use whatever you want. This is my 110 pound. I actually always start with the size that. Of, of a six and a quarter inch square. So it's the same exact size as my template. That's just my preference. You could probably start smaller if you wanted, um, if you want to just work with an A2. And now you're going to see how these are going to lay over. So I really don't even need the template under there anymore. The template is just to line up my stamps. So Alan, do you want to come back up to camera? There you go. So I'm going to grab my inks now. I have four ink colors. I'm going to make four turns, so I have four ink colors. So I'm going to get started. I've got dandelion, which is a golden yellow, really pretty. Prickly pear perfection, which is a kind of a lime green. And then I have bally blue, which is a bright blue. It's actually not even the blue that I used on here, but I thought I would try it. And then I've got tickled pink, which is my favorite pink. All right, so these are the colors I'm going to use. I'm going to work my way up gradually in color. I've got my stamp pendable ready to go. And I have my stamp cleaner, my extreme clean, which we do have back in stock in the store. Um, and uh, so I'm going to set that aside because I'm going to need that. And then I also have my little, my little, this is just a little moist, um, moist wipe. Um, it's actually a lawn fawn. I don't know what they call it, a chamois, I think. So, um, all right, I'm going to start with the yellow because I like to go light to dark. So I'm going to go ahead and ink up all of these stamps with my dandelion. You're going to see how fast this comes together because it's pretty cool. So just make sure I get ink on everybody here. And now one of the drawbacks, I will tell you, to doing all quadrants at the same time and having these, you know, spaced all over the place is, you know, just the application of pressure. Having the stamp pendable really helps with that pressure. Um, but it is still possible since this is so big that I may have to apply extra pressure in the center. It's easier around the edges. So I'm just going to go over that really well. And it looks like we got everybody. Perfect. There we go. So that is the dandelion. I'm gonna set that color aside. I'm gonna give my stamps a quick clean. Oops, this is the first time, oh, there we go. My first time using this one, sorry. It's a brand new bottle. Let me just clean these up. Hey, Alan, I might need a little, I think I just squeezed a little too much cleaner on here. <laughs> it's kind of pooling. It's a brand new bottle, I forgot. Um, I might need something to dry, like one of my little towels over there. Might be good. 
just a little bit, a little dab. We'll get these dry. Oh, there we go. Let me just dab that a little bit. That should be okay. I just want to make sure I don't have too much moisture on them because it'll water down my ink. So let me make sure I get them. Sorry, I just applied too much of the cleaner, so that was my error. Okay, so next color I'm going to go up to is my Prickly Pear Perfection. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to make one rotation. So you can choose if you're going to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. So I'm going to start going clockwise. So I make one rotation and leave it at that. Now I'll get this inked up. Hope that I get them all. There we go. Now, like I said, I don't want you to worry if you get any any of these images overlapping or coming really close to you know to each other. Look how cute that is. Adorbs. Love it. Love it. All right, so let me get this one clean now. Just a little bit. It's the most tedious part of it, right? Just getting it clean. Because I don't want the colors to, um, I don't want the previous color to change the, um, the, the next color that I use. All right, let me dab these a little bit. Oh, looks like Andrea is here and Ivy Alf has joined us. Hello, ladies. All right, so next color is going to be Bally Blue. I'm going to do one more rotation. All right, so this is rotation number two. You technically do four rotations, so I guess that's, well, yeah, that's rotation. I only turned it the second time. So that is rotation number two. I guess the fourth rotation is when you turn it back to where it's supposed to be initially started. Make sure I get those color, colored or covered. There we go. Now, if I hadn't rotated that, I would be, I, I would have seen it. I would have been going over the same exact space that I, that I just did or the same exact, you know, images. <gasps> Look how stunning right before your very eyes. All right, so rotation number three. And I'm gonna put Bally Blue aside. Let me clean these. Looks like Regan has joined us. Hello, hi Regan, nice to see you. Kinda, sorta, since I can't actually see anybody. <laughs> Who else is here? K Ma K K uh, Kamado? Kamada Kamada? Is that Kama, does that what does that mean? What does that mean? Okay. Let me just little dab a do you get any excess off of there. Jill Gorman is here. All right, let me make sure I think I turned it. Yes, I did turn it. So let me make sure these aren't See now that carrot there has got a little too much moisture on it. I can feel it. So I'm just trying to get any excess moisture off of those. So the last color then is going to be tickled pink. This is my favorite, favorite pink in our entire hybrid ink collection. I love this pink. This is what I use the most <laughs> out of every single color. I love it. All right, here we go. A little extra pressure right there in the center. <gasps> Ta-da! Look at that. I'll tell you, this thing, this thing works so doggone good. It doesn't look like, you know, that much of a tool. <laughs> but it really does the trick. If you don't have a stamp pendable yet, I would get one. All right, so let me get these one last clean. 
And then I'm going to hand this off to, actually, do I need to, I don't think I need to hand it off. Do I need to? Yeah, I do. I got to hand it off to Alan so he can put the stamps away. Sorry, Alan. <laughs> I'm going to need you to put the stamps away. Okay. So. Let me, let me get Alan set up so that he can put the stamps away real quick. Will you do me a favor, Alan? Okay. Will you take these and put these stamps away for me in each of these? And kind of do it quickly because i got to start the next card in a moment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love this. He loves it when he has to do things quickly. Okay, so this is our background that I just made. You, you saw it literally took me just a few minutes. So, you know, once you get your stamps set up, you are good to go. Um, you can see it looks exactly like this one. You know, once you get it set up, I mean, you can mass produce these things pretty doggone quickly. You can change the colors up if you want. You can do different colors each time you do it so that you get a completely different look. But the coolest thing about this is that I created a pattern paper here that nobody else is going to have. I get to choose my stamps, the placement, the colors, all right, everything I get to choose and nobody else is going to have anything like it. So I went ahead when I, I created one of these initially, I'm not going to walk you through this whole card. I am going to walk you through the next card, but I wanted to show you how the background builder works. This is the card that I made with it. So I, I actually took our A2 layered um, diagonal stitch layered card toppers and I cut with the largest die, I cut the white card topper in the background there. And then I use the second largest die to just trim out or cut out a part of my pattern paper that I just built or I just made and popped it up on a little bit of foam. And then I just used stamps and sentiments from the rest of the set to embellish it. And it was super, super easy. This literally took just a matter of minutes to create. Um, the flowers here are, were just solid stamping. That was really easy. You cut them out with the dies. Same thing with the little bumblebees. All I had to do was color up a little bit of yellow with a Copic marker. Um, it, it was just super, super easy to do. And so, you know, you, you look at this card, you can mass produce these really easily, all in the, all exactly the same or in different colors if you want, different color combinations. Um, if you want to use the other wreath that comes in the Finest Bloom set, you can change it up a little bit. Um, you can decorate your wreaths differently. I mean, it's just completely customizable and really, 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 really fun. So that's how the background builder works. Um, it's just, I just love it. It's like I said, completely customizable. So I'm going to move on now and I want to show you how we're going to actually start from scratch. A um, Here's my little bag of tricks, right? So we're going to do another card. We're going to do an A2 card with the um uh the pirouette master template so let's see it looks like alan is getting going here let me get my little bag of tricks emptied out here you need these stamps? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's like do you need these stamps? <laughs> okay so let me move my little stuffs over here and get this stuff out of the way here too i don't want you to see what i've got going on yet uh, put that over there. Okay. So to get started with this, Alan, I'm, how are you doing over there? Good. This is the one that I need. Could you switch this to camera two? Sure. Would you mind? Okay. Three. Okay. So let me explain this template for those of you that don't know what you're looking at here because it looks more complicated, far more complicated than it is. This is basically an eight point star. It's just basic geometry. So, um, but we have it in different sizes. Each color is a different size. So we go from brown is, is a two and a half measurement. Purple is three inches. Three and a half is green. Four inches is yellow. And then four and a quarter is red. So depending on the size that you cut your paper, all right, any of those measurements, you're going to follow along and make your rotations like we, you know, we just did rotations with the background builder, but you're going to make your rotations using 
whichever color goes with the size that you're starting with. So um, I am actually going to start with uh, a four inch. So I actually have an A2 piece of cardstock here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim this down so that it is a four inch square. All right, so this one measures four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm going to trim this down so it's a four inch square. Now you don't have to start with a square. I just happen to be creating, this time I'm going to create a, a, a square card. If you want to work with an A2, then instead of lining up all four corners, you're only going to line up like the top two corners. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. Okay, so I have my four inch square. I have my stamping tool here. And I'm going to place that right into the corner. I want to use my Pirouette Master template. I like to put my, um, my magnet right up at the top. Now, because I have a four inch square, I'm gonna be using the yellow arrows here. And if you see, there we go. My corners line right up in there. They also line up with the ones at the bottom. All right. So I am gonna actually place a little bit of adhesive on the back. You can just use your magnets if you like, but for me, I just find that I like having a little bit of adhesive, but I don't want it to be too sticky. So I like to make it a little less sticky. There we go. You can use a temporary adhesive there too. I just happen to use what I have available and on hand next to me almost all the time. So I'm gonna place that into my template. Um, Alan went ahead and put all my stamps away so those are ready for me. Um, where is the next, where did my other template go? I must have it over here, let's see. I have created a little bit of a mess. All right. So the other template that I need, let me move this over here. The other template that I need is my Pirouette Circle stamp alignment. This one looks like a bullseye. This is the one that's going to help me with my stamp placement. It's going to help me make sure that I keep my stamps within a certain boundary, I guess you could say, so that they line up properly. So you notice I have a red arrow on the outside of um, the left and the right side here. Those arrows will line up with the red arrows that are on the master template. When you do that, you will make sure, actually it's easier to see if I go like this. This is your center point right here. If I line up those arrows, there we go, perfectly. See if I go like this, i do this. I have these little crisscross lines on my, my circle stamp alignment, and I have the same ones on my master template. When I line up those arrows in red, see how the lines are off right now? When I line up those arrows in red, everything lines up perfectly. And now that is my perfect center. And so now everything that I do, as long as I keep it within the boundaries that I get to select, because it's completely customizable, I will know that I'm always keeping everything centered on my card. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and place my four inch square again. Those little corners, line them up with the gold or the yellow because that's the four inch area. And now I'm going to line up my circles alignment. And I, I like to put my magnet over that one. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some stamps that I'm going to play with. So let's see, what am I going to work with? Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with my Easter Pirouette. And I'm going to grab this pretty little flower right here. And I'm going to just kind of place this in here. Now I can see that my little dashed line on the outside goes right out to the four inch. All right. That goes right all the way out to the outer edge. I don't want to go all the way out to the outer edge of my card. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to actually choose either the little green dot, dotted lines or the second dash lines. And those do have measurements. So the outer one is four inches. Um, the little green dotted one is three and a quarter and then three and a half. And so we kind of rotate and alternate your measurements there. But in all honesty, I don't really use the measurements much. Um, I just pay attention to where the little dashes are. 
So I'm going to stick with, you know, keeping mine at that second dash line. So I'm going to go ahead and put my little flower here. All right. Um, and this is, this is one of the little reeds from the, um, from the finest blooms. Um, it's this one right here. I already stamped it and die cut it. And so I'm going to just go like this and put this over and make sure that if I, cause I already know that I want to put this in the center of my wreath, but I want to make sure that my stamp underneath at that end is not going to be sticking out into the center. So I can just lay that over. And I know that now that measurement is going to be okay. As long as I don't extend far behind beyond that. So I'm going to go ahead now and pick up my stamp. Elizabeth is asking if there's anything in the works for the next exclusive kit. Oh, Elizabeth wants to know what we have in the works Our for the next exclusive kit. <laughs> yes, there is something in the works. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> that was very specific. Well, you know what? You answered a you asked a yes or no question. <laughs> So yes, there is something in the works. And no, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm actually trying to think of what it is right now. <laughs> actually, if I remember correctly, and the only reason I'm confused is because I'm planning out several of them. But I think the next one that we have has to do with a vacation that, I, that, that, that we're going to be taking. And you don't know what that vacation is, but I will tell you it's a sunny one. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> okay, so the color I'm going to start with here is going to be Fandango. Love this color. It's so pretty. It's kind of a pinky purple. So I'm going to do this the long way. One stamp at a time. Now, with this template, you're going to make eight rotations. Remember I said it's an eight-point star, so we have to hit each of those points around. So I'm going to do, I, here's where I started. My next two corners or arrows are right there. So I just make one eighth rotation. All right. I'm going to ink up again. And we're just going to make our way around here. I'm going to do the next one. Now, this is, this is how you need to start. This is like, if you're only going to make one card, this is the process you go through. If you're going to mass produce cards, this is the process you go through with the first one that you do. All subsequent cards will be much faster because you will already have your pattern or the layout of your stamps and it makes it much easier once you know where your stamps will be laid out. So I will, I will touch upon that. Actually, we'll see if we have time. It's already 7.33. Um, I think we actually, we've touched upon that in other videos that we have on YouTube already. Um, but you're going to see this come to life pretty quickly. You can see that I can talk through it. I can have a conversation with you or, well, with myself. Um, and I don't really have to think about what I'm doing because it's, it's just really that easy. So there we go. We've already started now. I'm going to make my final turn, sets it straight in the position that I started. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clean my stamp. and uh, get that put away and switch to my next one. I'm gonna get this color put away. Let me switch out my stamp. There's a follow-up question. Oh, there's a follow-up question. Uh-oh, I figured because I said you asked a yes or no question. Uh, timing. Oh, timing. That's an easier question. <laughs> well, maybe not. Uh, timing is going to be uh, toward the end of this month. Really? Well, yeah, the last one came out at the end of uh, January, I think, didn't it? I don't think so. Yeah, it was January. It was the end of January, wasn't it? Or did we do February? Well, no. I don't even like know. February. Was it February? Yeah. I'm all confused. Was it February 21st? I don't know. What month is it now? <laughs> I don't know. It was overwhelming, whatever it was. Um... I think it was February that came out. Was it February? I think so. Are you yes. sure? Yes. Rachel and Matt hit at the same time. Oh, you're right. <clears throat> All right, then I think we might be on target for... That's a good question. Let me put it this way. I don't have a release date yet. 
Um, but I was thinking, I was thinking it had to be at the end of this month. No, I kind of want to get away from having it at the end of the month. So I think we might do more like the middle of, of April. So let's, we'll, we'll have to see on that one. Um, but yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah. Oh, and I, oh, I can't tell. Okay. Sorry. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I put my next stamp in there. It's a nice big leafy one. I am going to lay this one in here in the center and make sure I'm covering up. And I'm not sure I am. I think I'm going to push that one out just a little bit and maybe even angle it a little bit more. And I am intentionally, actually, I'm going to put it over here by this one to make sure I'm not going outside of or too close. I'm going to intentionally angle this one a lot more. Because I want to keep it very close to that dashed line there. Now when I put this over here, what color was that? that one was called Fandango. So now I angled that extra far so that I'm still very close to my dashed line um, where I started with the first one. And at the same time, I'm not going too far in. I'm keeping that just on the inside of the little green dotted line. So that should work. It should give me a really, really pretty circle as we start to build this. So my next color is, where is it? My next color is a green. And I'm going back to Prickly Pear Perfection. And we're going to get this one inked up now and get going. This is a larger leaf that I think is just so pretty. We do, you know, we we try to put different sized um, images in there. So, you know, like some of the leaves, for example, might be really full and larger and longer like this one. Some of them are going to be really tiny to use, you know, for like filling in smaller spaces, um, for using on your um, your background template that we just worked with. This one also allows you to create like longer. If I were, if I wanted to have a, um, a wreath that had, uh, that was like fuller and longer, you could um, work with this one uh, to create something that was just, you know, like I said, just much, um, much fuller. Um, you could also do, oh my goodness, this is something I think I just thought about that I think would be really fun for fall actually to use just this leaf one here in like three colors maybe a gold and orange and a brown i think that would be amazing just you know do it three times and position it so that you just layer up all those beautiful leaves using the same stamp over and over again i think would be just stunning for fall look how pretty that is oh my gosh it's just so gorgeous and, you know, notice I have some areas that are a little bit darker, some that are a little bit lighter. I don't worry about that. I love that. I think of that as texture. Um, I don't want this to look like it was, you know, a, you know, computer generated um, wreath. I want it to look handcrafted and, uh, and have like texture and dimension to it. So I think that's really, really pretty. So my next stamp I'm going to use, I think it, I'm going to try with this one here. Let's try that one. Okay. So where is my alignment template? Here we go. Let's lay that on there. And I have this little space in here. I, I do tend to work in threes, like clusters of three. So I like um, having like three colors and having, um, let's see, what's this in here? I like having three colors and like three different stamps. There we go. Oops, I just moved it. Let me make sure that's still gonna work. Let me put my little magnet over here so that it's gonna work. Okay. So my next color then is going to be this is an orange and it's like a tangerine it's called tangerine dream so it's a beautiful beautiful bright springy orange and it, it's not going to be really intense but it's going to add a brightness and look at how pretty that is it layers right over just beautifully i really like layering the stamps 
over each other a bit so that it just really looks full. And, you know, I mean, when you look at nature and you look at like leaves and stuff and nature and flowers, everything's just kind of like all intermingled together. Um, they're not just lined up side by side, you know, giving each other space. They just kind of crowd each other. And I like that. I think it's, I think it's just lovely. Um, so that's what I tend to do when I am creating my wreaths on here. They're all just kind of having a little party together. They're not just sitting by each other on their phones, ignoring each other. <laughs> kind of an old fashioned way of having a get together, I guess. <laughs> like in person? Yeah, in person <laughs> and where they're actually, you know, mingling, talking to each other, interacting. <laughs> All righty. Look how pretty. Just three colors, three stamps. Look how gorgeous that is. Isn't that lovely? I think it's so pretty. I, I love it. I think it's just gorgeous. Okay, so from here, we're literally just going to do some assembly because I've done a lot of the work already. Um, this was the first one that I created. You can see it's just slightly a little bit different because I didn't start with, I didn't start, I didn't layer one over the other. Oh, that was what I was going to show you. If you wanted to mass produce, all right, this is the one that I did earlier. If I wanted to mass produce this one, all you need to do, actually I'll do it on this one because I have the tape on it. All you would need to do to mass produce this, it's so easy is line up your stamps in, like I've got three of them here, so I would line them up like in a triangle, right over the top of what I just stamped. So there's the first one. And what did I do? I think it was this one here. Here's the second one that I did in the yellow. And then I need the floral from the Easter one here. All right, so now I can pick up all three of those. And Alan, do you want to get me a piece of paper? Actually, I can do it on the back of this one. I'll just do it on the back of this one because I'm not going to use this one anyway. So, um, no, this one's not cut right. Or is it? Let me see. No, it is. So I'll use this one. I'm not going to use this one anyway. That was just my sample. So this is how you would do it. Okay, so I have my little, just ignored what I have there. I had tape on the back of it. So what I would do though with this to mass produce, I've created the first one. I've lined up my stamps, right? So I lined up my stamps over the first one that I created. You can see my three stamps here. I've got my three colors. And then all I have to do, let me get my colors going here so I have them in order of how I like them, is get inking. And you're going to see how much faster this is. So here's my, this is my leaf, this is my flowers, and this is the orange leaf. So you just have to pay attention to what you're inking. And this is why you separate them. This is why you don't put those stamps right next to each other so that you can ink easily. And so this way you get to ink all three colors and stamps at the same time. So then when I make my rotation all the way around that circle, I only have to do that rotation one time around the circle. And this is why this is a, it, it's an easy way of mass producing. You know, the first one is the one that you're designing. That's the one that is going to take you, you know, a little more time, you know, for planning and, you know, and stuff. But once you got it down, you just have to line up your stamps and then you go around your circle and here you go. Just like this. It's easy. You're going to see this one come together pretty quickly, provided I don't mess up my colors. <laughs> They're going to start to blend together as I start getting, you know, like a little more than halfway through it. See how they all start to come together? It's so pretty. 
But you can see just in this little bit of time how much faster it is than the first one that I did because I have everything all laid out and I don't have to go one color at a time with all of those turns. Oops. Let's see. I think I must be almost done. There you go. That's how fast you can do it. Once you have your design and you've done the first one, it's that much easier and faster to mass produce them. This is something too, like if you want to give this to, you know, to the kids to do to play with, it's a really, really fun and easy thing for the kids to do. They're not going to get hurt. They're not going to get all messy. They're not going to ruin anything. They're going to accomplish something artistic and beautiful very quickly, you know, because kids don't have a whole lot of patience, right? But they're, they're going to accomplish it in a short amount of time and they're just going to see it come to life. And that is just so exciting. And I think that's, that's something that is a really great way to make crafting exciting and accessible to kids. So I, I just think that's kind of fun. Okay. So what are we going to do with this though? Let's see. Bum, bum, bum. Let's see what I have here. I have lost all my pieces already. All right, here we go. This is what I have going on. Because we're going to make a little card. I wanted. To, I thought it would be fun to make a little note card. So I have a four inch square here. And so I just took some some scrap um, card stock. It's it's very close to the color that I have in the ink. A little bit, a little more of a burgundy. But I think it looks really pretty. And I literally just trimmed it so that it was um, it is four and an eighth inch square. That way it leaves me only a sixteenth around each edge. So I'm going to go ahead and get that adhered, you know, like matted or mounted onto there, onto that beautiful piece of cardstock. And that literally is just a little, just a little scrap cardstock that I had. I keep a little bin or basket of scraps. There we go. And then this piece, now this is just a little, a little note card. This is four and a half inches square. So I literally just took um, a piece of my uh, Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock and I cut it at um, lengthwise at four and a half. And then I cut the length, the longest length to nine inches and I scored it at four and a half. And so I just have a little, little note card that is four and a half inches um, square. And I think it looks really pretty having that extra edge of white around. Um, so you know what, I think I'm gonna pop that up on a little bit of foam. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have some dimension on it. I really like having dimension on my cards. I think I say that every single time, but I just, I do. I like the weight of it. I like how it just, how it presents. It's just really pretty. Um, that might be a little bit long. That's okay. I'll save all my extra little pieces and just put them on the outside. I do like to support the center. So I typically will put three strips. There we go. Alrighty. Is Will out there tonight? Yes. All right. Hi, Will. How you doing? Will's quiet, though. Will's quiet? Yeah. Is he okay? Yeah. All right. Let me get this centered. I think that's centered. I don't want to pop my head over it. So, all right. So the little pieces that I have here that I've done, you, you've already seen the little wreath, right? That wreath is from the finest blooms. All I did was stamped it in that, um, the prickly pear perfection, the green, uh, which is right here. I just inked that up and then I die cut it with the coordinating die, put a little bit of foam around it. And that's going to go right in the center here. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. Ah, 
There we go. And let's see. Is that centered? Look how pretty that is. Oh my gosh. I want that wreath for the front door. That's really pretty. <laughs> if I do say so myself. Okay. So I went ahead and I stamped some of the little characters. Here's my sentiment. This is um, wishing you happiness from the finest blooms. I've got the little bunny here from the finest blooms. And I also have the carrot here and I've already colored that up. And then I brought in, because I love mixing these up, I brought in um, from the Easter set this little chick right here. And then I stamped both of the strawberries and colored them up as well. And so you're going to see, I'm actually not making an Easter card, even though I'm using some of these Easter stamps. I wanted to show you how it's versatile. It doesn't have to be for Easter. So I went ahead and I stamped, and I actually, I have two strips here that I just adhered together. And I'm going to because I wanted it to be thicker. And I also have, check this out. This is from the Picket Fence Pocket Die. This is also in the new collection, uh, the February collection. I love this. I, I'm finding I'm going, I'm grabbing this one a lot to use. So this is a little bit longer than I want. I want it to be um, just a little bit shorter so it'll go right above the um, the sentiment. So I'm going to get my scissors and I'm just going to trim this down to the size that I want it to be. Very easy to do. There we go. Just trim that down, get rid of that little side piece there. And I'm going to lay this out. Just create a little scene. Wishing you happiness and this is going to go here. So. I'm going to go ahead and put some tape on the back of this, of my sentiment here. Let me make sure this is opening the correct direction. Yep. I'm going to put some tape just in the center there. And I'll make sure I have that centered approximately. I think that looks pretty good. Is it straight? Let me lift it up and see if it's straight. I think it is. Okay. And then next, I'm going to adhere this right down on top of that wreath. So I need my glue. Where's my glue? This is our new craft glue. And it is a white glue, but it dries clear. So I'm going to have this. I don't need it in the centers. I just need a little bit on the sides here. Just a little bit there. I think that's where I need it. And then here. I think that's going to do it. And like I said, it is white, but it dries clear. It's a really nice glue. Just adhere that down. Right up. I just want to butt it right up against my sentiment. Isn't that cute already? I mean, seriously, it's adorable already. <laughs> I almost want to leave it like that. <laughs> And just put the little strawberries on there. Wouldn't that be so cute if I just put a couple little strawberries on there? But I'm going to... I'm planning on putting my little characters too. So I've got a bunny and I have a chick. And let's see how these are going to fit. I've got this strawberry. I'm going to do this strawberry. Put a strawberry here and put a little carrot is kind of where I'm thinking. Okay, so we're going to do that. I don't think I have room for two strawberries. I think it's going to be too crowded. Does that look too crowded? Yeah, that's just too much. Do I just want the strawberries? No, the carrot. I have a bunny. I have to have a carrot. Yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead and put these on first. Uh, let's do the strawberry. Boy, strawberries sound good right now. I must be hungry. There we go. There's that. I do have these up on a little bit of foam, too. And put that carrot in there. There we go. Those are up on a little bit of foam. I think it's too much if I have the other one in there. So let's put this little bunny in here. Is he going to work? I'm not going to put him on foam. I'm just going to put a little bit of tape on him, actually. There we go. Oh, 
so cute. It's just adorable. Cute, cute, cute. I'm putting their little feet on the sentiment. So I think that's adorable. There we go. <laughs> so cute. Wishing you happiness. I love it. And I, I think that's that one's just too much. So we're not going to do that one. So that is that card. This one, by the way, is a card that I made for Easter that I love. I think it's just so pretty. Um, and this one, um, again, it has a little fence there. Some of the characters from both of the stamp sets showing you how you can use the other wreath in pink, a different setup of colors with, with the wreaths and different stamps that I use, some of the other little pieces in here as well. Um, it's just so fresh and so pretty, but this is this one's for Easter, and this one is just for any time, for spring, for summer, absolutely beautiful. And then, of course, we also have this card here that I made using that beautiful, beautiful background um, that we created with the background uh, template. So here's some options for you. Uh, for Easter, for spring, for summer, uh, for whatever you want it to be. Just love them. Yay! I hope you guys like them. Yay! I'm looking to see if we have any questions here that need to be answered. I haven't heard anything from Alan, so... Okay, Alan, you want to go ahead and switch us back to camera one? Okay. So that is everything. That is, in a nutshell, the Pirouette Pattern Template. So really, really fun, really, really versatile. Um, something I did not mention is, you know, with these stamp sets, with these, you can actually, you know, we size these the same between all the different sets. So it's, it's a real compendium assortment, which means that, you know, you buy the templates once, you have your templates, you can keep adding stamp sets to it. Um, you can also mix these up. So I showed you how you can mix between the Easter Pirouette and the Finest Blooms. But take a look at some of the other sets that you already have in your collection because you can mix between those and you're going to be able to mix with the sets that we're going to be adding in the future as well. So it is time for a giveaway. And can anybody guess what the giveaway is going to be? <laughs> the giveaway is going to be the Easter Pirouette stamps and the Easter Pirouette dies because Easter's coming. So you know, regardless of whether or not you have your pirouette templates, you're going to be able to use these um, to create beautiful, beautiful cards uh, for Easter, and you're going to have a lot of fun with them. So, Alan, we need a name. Lori Yoder, is that right? Y-O-D-E-R? Lori Yoder, you are tonight's winner. Yay! So Lori, I need you please to send us an email and send it to uh, customerservice at ldrscreative.com. Need your name, need your, uh, um, your complete mailing address, and we will get your prize out to you right away. Yay! Congratulations. Thank you for playing. <laughs> All right, everybody. Let me get all these held up here so you can see everything. So, yay. <laughs> I had fun tonight. I hope you guys had fun too. Absolutely had a blast with these. I love these things. I hope you love working with your templates. Um, and you know what? Share with us. Share whatever you create with your templates. Um, share on our, on our Facebook group. I mean, we've got, we have so much activity happening out there these days. Um, you know, our design team put... They, they put a lot of projects out there and we have a lot of, you know, a lot of you guys coming out and posting your projects, which is just wonderful. We love to see what you guys are doing with everything. So um, anyway, I hope we'll see your pirouettes out there. Yay. Um, all right, everybody, for now, we are done. It is almost eight o'clock. Um, it, uh, it is dinner time for me. <laughs> I am hungry. All right, so thank you so much for joining us. We will be back uh, next week, same time, same place, 7 p.m. on Thursday. I have no idea what I'm going to be working with. I don't know. I am thinking, I'm thinking it might have to do with cover plate dies because I'm looking at the cover plate dies right now and I'm kind of eyeing those. So I might be working those wonderful cover plate dies into my project somehow. We'll see. All right, everybody, have a wonderful evening. Until next time.
Bye.